Welcome to the magnificent city of Lincoln, a spectacular cradle of English history dating back over 2,000 years. On this walk through the historic heart of Lincoln, we'll uncover the story of the city's rise over the centuries and the tale of the many amazing landmarks that visitors still come to see from all over the world. We begin, however, right on the northern edge of central Lincoln, at Priory Gate. The iconic northern entrance to the heart of the city, this gate was actually built fairly recently, in 1816, albeit with materials that made up the original 14th century Priory Gate. In the medieval era, Priory Gate was one of a group of gates that gave entry to Lincoln's mighty cathedral close, home to what is by far the city's most famous landmark. We're walking through the grounds of the utterly immense Lincoln Cathedral, so large that it was built over the course of four centuries, from the year 1072 until 1311. An iconic behemoth of medieval architecture, Lincoln Cathedral was not only once the largest cathedral in all of England, but also the tallest building on earth for over 200 years. A site of real national significance for centuries, to the right of the main cathedral building here, we can see the 13th century chapter house, historically used by the cathedral's governing body, but which on three occasions played host to England's national parliament. The mighty Gothic cathedral stands proud on Lincoln's northern edge, but it's also surrounded by a number of historic houses that date from a number of different eras, from early medieval to the Georgian and Victorian periods. The reason for this diversity is that Lincoln, as one of the most important cities in England for at least a thousand years, has been constantly evolving over time, with the number of riveting historical gems to be found on its streets, along with the mighty landmarks like the cathedral. Just down beside the cathedral off Minster Yard, we find a small square that hosts a collection of medieval buildings. Just across the square, you might be able to see a small castle-style gateway, which leads down towards the Bishop's Palace. Built in 1163, the Bishop's Palace, as the name suggests, was the home of the Bishop of Lincoln. The Bishop of Lincoln was one of the most important men in medieval England, governing the country's largest religious subdivision, or diocese and his palace was therefore an extremely important place. Now over 850 years after it was first built, essential conservation is being carried out on the ruins of the Bishop's Palace, which was destroyed in the 17th century after being set on fire and sacked during the English Civil War. But the Bishop's Palace, while lying mostly in ruins today, isn't the only building in this part of Lincoln to have famously sustained damage in the past. As we mentioned, Lincoln Cathedral here was once the world's tallest building, its central tower topped by a spire that soared high into the sky, giving the cathedral a height of 520 feet, or 160 metres. But as you can see, no such spire exists today, as it collapsed during a violent storm in 1548. The loss of the cathedral spire almost halved the building's total height, and lost the cathedral the title of world's tallest building, which then went to St Mary's Church in the German city of Stralsund. However, the historic maximum height of Lincoln Cathedral was so monumental that it would be another three and a half centuries before a building exceeding it would be constructed. And while it's no longer the world's tallest building, the enormous Lincoln Cathedral is still a marvel to behold, rightly having been described as one of England's most beautiful buildings. What's more, having begun construction over 900 years ago, the cathedral is a miracle of medieval engineering. But the cathedral isn't just architecturally impressive, as the building has also played its part in much of English history. As we mentioned, the Bishop of Lincoln once held great political power in England, and most famously, in 1215, he was one of a select few men that was present at the signing of the Magna Carta, one of the most important documents in world history. 
Initially designed to limit the power of the English King John, the Magna Carta went on to serve as a major influence for democracies across the world. And as such, it's a highly treasured document, of which only four copies remain in existence. One of those four copies is housed here in Lincoln, in the city's nearby castle, which we'll visit in a few minutes. But before it was moved to the castle, Lincoln's copy of the Magna Carta lived inside the cathedral for centuries, further cementing the cathedral and the whole city's status as one of the most important places in all of England. We now find ourselves at the western end of Lincoln Cathedral, and the edge of the city's cathedral close, which is still enclosed by walls in parts. After more than 900 years of existence, the towering cathedral is very much alive and well, acting as a working place of worship and one of Lincoln's principal tourist attractions, always kept in beautiful condition by the dedicated people who look after it. But we'll now make our way away from Lincoln Cathedral and towards the city's equally historic castle, which stands opposite the grand religious building. But as we walk through the 14th century Exchequer Gate out of the cathedral close, it's about time that we had a look at exactly where you'd find Lincoln on a map of England. As you can see, Lincoln sits right at the heart of Lincolnshire, England's second largest county, which stretches far across a mostly flat landscape in the eastern Midlands. Of course, as the name suggests, Lincoln is the county town of Lincolnshire, and by far and away the most historic place in the county, packed to the brim with so much history that we certainly won't be able to cover it all on this walk. Now out of the cathedral close, we're making our way onto Castle Hill, passing by the beautiful Lee Pemberton House, built in 1543, and once upon a time, the home of one of Lincoln's wealthiest local merchants. Lee Pemberton House is one of the many historic sites you'll find here, in what's known as Uphill Lincoln, the area around the castle and the cathedral, and which is the main attraction for most visitors to the city. We'll get a very clear demonstration of why exactly this area of the city is known as Uphill Lincoln when we tackle the infamous Steep Hill in a short while. But here, we're approaching Lincoln Castle. Like the cathedral, the castle is also being restored, having been built all the way back in the 11th century, on the orders of none other than William the Conqueror. But while the castle that stands today is an impressive remnant of Lincoln's Norman era heritage, a fortress existed here even before then, in Roman times. A Roman fortress was built here around 48 AD, although it was only home to a military garrison for a few years, as they soon moved on from Lincoln to York, which later became a Roman provincial capital. But the site the Romans chose for their fortress here in Lincoln was wise, located at the top of the hill with views across the surrounding landscape. The strategic benefits of the site were evident to the Normans too, who built the beefy walls and defences that surround the vast castle interior today. The walls date from the 11th century, and during a time of great political upheaval in the medieval era, the walls were involved in two important battles at this castle, which we'll talk about in a few moments. Before we do, let's marvel the impressive building that sits at the heart of the castle today. Lincoln Crown Court, which was built in 1822 with a design inspired by the castle, and which still operates as a working courthouse. The rest of the castle grounds, meanwhile, are open to the public all year round, where you can uncover many action-packed stories of Lincoln's past. A walk around the enclosed castle bailey here is always enthralling, but you can also stroll along the historic Norman walls, and get up close with the defensive towers that look out across the city. We can see one of those towers across from us here, the famous Lucy Tower, named after the heiress Lucy of Bolingbroke, and which dates back to the 12th century. Originally, the Lucy Tower was the first castle Mott, the man-made mound that was the most fiercely defended part of Lincoln Castle during the battles of Lincoln. A little closer to us, meanwhile, is a rather more modern building, an imposing former jailhouse that operated from 1788 until 1878. The jail was a debtor's prison, 
but after its closure in 1878, it was left empty for a long time, before eventually being converted into the expansive museum that it is today, where you'll find Lincoln's treasured copy of the Magna Carta. Now returning to the 13th century East Gate, through which we entered the Castle Bailey, to its right we can see another raised tower. That's the Observatory Tower, which is the second mot of Lincoln Castle, and like the Lucy Tower, affords incredible views across the modern city and the surrounding landscape. As we mentioned, this castle has long had great strategic value owing to its high position atop a very, very steep hill overlooking the rest of Lincoln. This position played a major part in the castle's defence during the two battles of Lincoln, the first of which took place in 1141 and was a key moment in England's medieval civil war, known as the Anarchy. The Anarchy was fought between forces loyal to King Stephen and Empress Matilda, and the battle here in Lincoln in 1141 resulted in the capture of King Stephen, putting Matilda on the English throne for a short while, although she was never formally declared as monarch, which would have otherwise made her the first Queen of England. Decades after the battle during the Anarchy, the Second Battle of Lincoln took place in the year 1217, when invading French forces, who had taken control of the city beforehand, suffered a decisive loss. Now, though we've been walking around uphill Lincoln for over 10 minutes, we've only just scratched the surface of this most historic area of the city. There's so much to see in this part of Lincoln that it could be a day out in itself, and you'll want to spend as long as you can up here, because it's connected to the rest of the city by a legendary and infamously steep street. That's right, it's time for us to make our way down Lincoln's most iconic street, the helpfully named Steep Hill, which drops dramatically from uphill Lincoln all the way down to the modern heart of the city. A narrow lane lined with historic buildings on both sides, this has for centuries been the principal route up to the top of Lincoln here, even today serving as the shortest and most often used link between the two main centres of the city. The origins of Steep Hill go back to the Roman era, when those living around the small fortress decided to expand their settlement down the hill. At the time, Lincoln was known as Lindum Colonia, and the movement down the hill from the fortress was the first great expansion of this historic settlement. But as the Romans grew Lindum Colonia down Steep Hill, they lined this street with steps, a feature which would certainly come in handy nowadays. As the downwards gradient of the street gets ever steeper, here we find ourselves passing by one of the oldest houses in all of Lincoln, the Norman's House, which was built way back in the year 1170. It's thought that the house was once the home of the well-known Aaron the Jew, a financier who was said to have been the wealthiest man in England, richer even than the king himself. Aaron was a major figure in Lincoln's distinctive Jewish community, and a little further down Steep Hill, we'll see an example of how the Jewish community played a key role in the city's development a good few centuries back. Continuing along Steep Hill down towards the city centre now, You'll notice that this iconic street is certainly busy with people, many of them tourists walking up towards the main attractions in Uphill Lincoln, and many others locals simply travelling across the city. The street runs for roughly 0.2 miles up the hill, passing by a number of historic buildings like Harding House here, built in 1400. But the main attraction of Steep Hill for many isn't the buildings that run along it, but rather the street's steepness itself. Steep Hill is the fourth steepest street in Britain, with an average gradient of around 16 degrees, although this central part of the street is much steeper. Now walking down here isn't too tough, but scaling Steep Hill is a real challenge for visitors on a day out in Lincoln. While there are bus services that quickly circumnavigate the city centre, allowing you to visit uphill if you can't make it up Steep Hill, the city has added handrails to help the ascent if you really want to get a feel for this historic part of Lincoln. The Roman era steps are sadly long gone, replaced mainly by cobbles that you do need to be careful not to trip up on either when going up or coming down Steep Hill. 
But the cobbles only add to the atmosphere of this iconic street, a tourist attraction in itself today, but which, rather amazingly, was once a local marketplace. In the medieval era, stalls lined Steep Hill from top to bottom, selling food to the people of Lincoln. The street market here was also strictly ordered, divided into clear sections, with fish sold up at the top, poultry in the middle, and meat and corn down at the bottom of the street. Steep Hill Market was a central fixture in life in medieval Lincoln for locals, although the city was arguably more famous among outsiders for its wool markets, with Lincolnshire wool once regarded as among the best in medieval Europe. And speaking of Europe, here near to the bottom of Steep Hill, we'll find a historic building that's said to be the oldest occupied house in all of Europe. These two buildings bear a passing resemblance to the Norman's house that we passed further back up Steep Hill, and it's the one on the left that may be the holder of that European record. It's known as the Jews' House, and it was built in the year 1150, neighboured on our right by Jews' Court, a much newer building of the 18th century, which may have once been used as a synagogue. The Jews' House, meanwhile, gained its name from a Jewish lady known as Belaset of Wallingford, who lived inside in the 13th century. Belaset wasn't the first resident of this long-occupied house, but she did become well-known in Lincoln, as she was executed in the year 1287 for clipping gold coins to make counterfeit currency. Her death came just before a dark period for Lincoln's sizeable Jewish community, who were expelled from England in 1290, after which point the Jews' house here was seized by the authorities. But before their expulsion, Lincoln's Jewish community had been vital to the city. Jewish people first came to Lincoln in the 11th century, alongside William the Conqueror, who was pushing north across England as he established power as the nation's new king. William described the Jewish people that came with him to England as a mobile bank, including many wealthy financiers such as Aaron the Jew. With such great wealth, the Jewish community that was established here in Lincoln grew to become England's second most significant after the community in London. But a rise in tensions over the centuries led to their infamous expulsion in 1290. Now, after all that, we've made our way to the very bottom of Steep Hill and the Strait, which leads us out onto Lincoln's very long High Street a rather different route through the city from the historic street that we've just clambered down. The first landmark on the High Street is the Cardinal's Hat, one of Lincoln's oldest pubs, which was built in the 15th century. The Cardinal's Hat only came into use as an inn from 1521, and it takes its name from a former Bishop of Lincoln, Cardinal Wolsey, who later went on to serve as King Henry VIII's right-hand man during the early period of his tumultuous reign. That's just one example of the rich history to be found even down here in this part of Lincoln. But as we descend further along the High Street, you'll notice that our surroundings have suddenly become rather more modern than what we've seen so far in this historic city. Running for 1.2 miles as a whole, High Street is indeed home to a whole range of buildings, with everything from medieval landmarks to 20th and 21st century retail developments that give an almost entirely different image of Lincoln to the mostly cobbled area uphill. Now, while Lincoln has of course long been a major population centre, the city has grown significantly over the last 200 years away from its historic heart up at the top of Steep Hill. While the landmarks at the top of the hill held great political sway in the medieval era, the narrow streets were never going to be suited to a more modern existence, and so Lincoln had to expand even further outwards. During the Industrial Revolution, the city boomed on the back of a thriving engineering industry, building heavy machinery. This early growth was spurred further by the arrival of the railways in Lincoln in 1846, which turned the city into a major regional hub as industry exploded across Britain. The engineering boom of the Industrial Revolution was, well, revolutionary for the world. But a little later on during the First World War, a development in one of Lincoln's factories would change global warfare forever. 
Local firm William Foster & Co. are credited with building the world's first prototype military tank early on in the conflict. And by 1916, tanks based on the prototype built here in Lincoln made their debut on the battlefield at the Battle of the Somme. Lincoln's thriving engineering sector remained a major driver of the city's economy through the first half of the 20th century, again producing many important war goods during the Second World War. Even after the war, engineering was still the biggest employer in Lincoln, and remained so until a decline in the late 20th century. But while engineering no longer occupies the central position in life in Lincoln that it once did, the city has smartly pivoted towards embracing its incredible past becoming a hugely popular tourist destination. Just in front of us here we can see another famous Lincoln landmark, the city's 16th century Guildhall, which spans the high street at the southern edge of the very heart of Lincoln. Before the Guildhall, meanwhile, is this colourful statue of the famous Lincoln Imp, emblazoned with the flag of Lincolnshire. A symbol of the city, the story of the Lincoln Imp is steeped in legend and myth, which we'll talk more about in a second. Looking back up to the Guildhall, this building has been the long-serving meeting place of Lincoln City Council, which, as the city has grown larger, now meets both inside the Guildhall here and in the newer, larger City Hall nearby. But the Guildhall also sits atop a large gateway, which holds an interesting historical key to Lincoln's past. The gate is known as the Stone Bow, a name which derives from the Old Norse word Stennibogi, literally meaning stone arch. This small remnant of Norse language tells us of Lincoln's Viking history, and the city was once one of the most important boroughs in the Danelaw, when much of England found itself under Scandinavian rule. It was a few centuries after the era of the Vikings that the Lincoln Imp appeared for the first time in history. It's said that two of these mischievous creatures were sent to Earth by Satan, and they caused chaos right across northern England. One day, the Imps made their way to Lincoln Cathedral, and set about smashing up valuable furniture inside and causing mischief with the bishop. But upon seeing their behaviour, an angel in the cathedral is said to have come to life telling the imps to stop their pranks. Unperturbed, one imp simply decided to throw rocks back at the angel, and so as punishment, the angel turned that imp to stone. His naughty friend, meanwhile, escaped and was never caught. The story goes that the second imp still roams Lincoln Cathedral, with the wind up at the top of the hill said to be his presence still rushing about the area. Centuries later, the Lincoln Imp remains a famous symbol of the city, even owing the local football club its nickname, Lincoln City FC, often referred to as the Imps. Moving on from the legend of the Lincoln Imp now, we're continuing southwards down High Street, and it's at this point that we're about to cross a bridge, though you may not realise it yet from this view. The gorgeous black and white building we see here sits on top of what is known as the High Bridge, and it was first built back in 1550, serving as the home of a row of shops in the medieval era. Now a bustling cafe, the buildings are more than just a pretty sight, as this bridge is believed to be the oldest in England with buildings that stand on top of it. But what about the bridge itself? Well, it was built around 1160, roughly four centuries before the buildings on top of it, to cross the river Witham, which flows through central Lincoln. Down here, we can see the river, while this side of the bridge features a more conventional appearance, although there was once a church located here above the river, giving High Bridge high sides on both sides. Now the Witham is a major river in this part of England, and although it's not easily navigable through Lincoln owing to the bridges that run over it today, the river was once a central part of the development of this part of the city. You'll remember that earlier we spoke about how Lincoln Castle was the first site of Roman settlement in the area, before people began to spread down Steep Hill. That expansion of the city was a gradual process, however, and it wasn't until the Viking era, centuries later, 
that this lower part of Lincoln was developed, with the river with them coming into use as a way to transport goods around the vast landscape that would become Lincolnshire. We'll talk more about how the Riverside settlement developed in a moment, but here we find one of the oldest buildings on High Street. Fronted by Lincoln's War Memorial of 1922, the church behind is St Benedict's, a much, much older landmark. The church is said to have been built as far back as the year 1107, although much of it was destroyed in fighting during the English Civil War in the 17th century. But the presence of an early medieval church like St Benedict's tells us that, by the 12th century, this lower part of Lincoln by the River Witham was home to a sizeable permanent settlement. This came about as the growth of the trade along the Witham saw many precious metals being brought to the Viking city of Lincoln. This trade gave rise to a mint, which was established here in Lincoln, and is said to have been only second in importance to the currency mint in the Vikings' capital of York, further north. Lincoln's famous mint was an early driver of development and expansion in the area, and although it closed down centuries ago, its legacy is kept alive by a number of street names in the city, such as Mint Street and Silver Street. But here, we find ourselves in what is today known as the Cornhill Quarter, a more recent development of the city that is based around Lincoln's historic corn exchange buildings. The white building before us here is the original corn exchange, which was built in 1847, while on the left, just beside it, is a major extension of 1879. As with many major cities across England, the corn exchange was once a hugely important spot in Lincoln, with the trade of corn, grains and cereals a major part of local commerce. The corn exchange's heyday was through the second half of the 19th century into the first few decades of the 20th century, with the buildings, in 1924, becoming a major market hall not only for corn, but a wide range of products that were traded in the city. The rise of the corn exchange roughly coincided with Lincoln's fastest period of population growth, during which time the historic, rudimentary markets that once occupied the centre of the city were replaced by modern retail infrastructure, a trend that has continued to this day, with shops lining the entire length of Lincoln's very long high street, which we're still walking along. Admittedly, given that most of the buildings to be found in this part of the high street, after the Guildhall, were built in the last few decades, it doesn't quite have the same spectacular feel as the oldie waldy likes of Steep Hill and Uphill Lincoln, although a few interesting examples of earlier 20th century architecture do remain. But the traces of medieval settlement also remain, many in plain sight for people who might walk straight by without noticing. Across this busy road, for example, there stands an 11th century church among the trees, along with a historic watering hole. Both landmarks are now rather overshadowed by the development of Lincoln's busy railway line, which runs just behind them into Lincoln Station, which we'll head towards in a moment or two. But before we do that, let's take a look at St Mary's Conduit, an ornate feature of the High Street with an intriguing history. Built in the 16th century, this was very simply a place where Lincolnians would come to collect drinking water and it remained in use for nearly four centuries until 1906. The reason that the former fountain looks so old, however, is that it's made from the sturdy stones of a monastery that once stood on this site. That monastery was Whitefriars, which was dissolved in the 1530s, but which gave birth to the conduit, which was first used by its monks. Here among the trees, meanwhile, we find the church of St Mary Le Wigford, another of Lincoln's oldest churches. Originally built all the way back in the 11th century, the church has been stunningly preserved over the last 900 years, with restorations and perhaps the trees that shelter it, helping it to stay intact for an incredible period of time. But as we mentioned, the church sits among an area that's been heavily developed and modernised over the past couple of centuries, principally because this is an area where the railways famously began to roll into Lincoln in the 19th century. The train line through Lincoln is a major artery on England's railway network, built here in 1848 to connect London with York. The station buildings here 
make up what is today the busiest station in all of Lincolnshire, acting as an important connecting point for trains running to London, Sheffield, Nottingham and many more major destinations. But while this station is the only way in and out of Lincoln by train in the present day, it was once actually one of two stations to be found in the city. A little further down the high street, there was once Lincoln St Mark's station, which was opened in 1846, making it the first station in Lincoln, albeit smaller than the one before us here. St Mark's station operated for 139 years until 1985, but was then demolished and is now the site of a modern shopping centre. To distinguish this ultimately more significant station from St Mark's, this station was for a long time known as Lincoln Central, until its name was changed very recently in 2019 to simply Lincoln. Now the station is a great way to reach the city if you're visiting for the day, but it's not just tourists that make their way to Lincoln by train. With strong links to other cities as well as regional towns, the station is an important gateway to Lincoln for the city's many students. Students of the University of Lincoln make up a sizeable chunk of the local population, with over 16,000 enrolled. The university has long been a fixture of modern Lincoln too, and although it's only been known as the University of Lincoln since 2001, its origins go back over 160 years. Back in 1861, what would later become the University of Lincoln was, perhaps rather strangely, founded as the Hull School of Art. Over time, however, the School of Art developed a wider curriculum and grew into a university whose campus is today located just a short walk from where we are now, in the modern Brayford Pool area near to the River Witham. But despite being located in a more modern part of the city, students of the University of Lincoln certainly don't miss out on the city's proud heritage. As well as being a short walk away from the bustling and historic heart of Lincoln, Graduation ceremonies for students take place all the way up the hill inside Lincoln Cathedral, a magnificent venue for the occasion. Getting all the way up Steep Hill in a gown sounds like a bit of a challenge though, a fair walk away, as we can see the towers of Lincoln Cathedral rising over the city just in the distance from here. We've come a long way down the hill to reach this point, again finding ourselves by the mighty extended Corn Exchange of 1879, and the place where we'll be ending our walk around this magnificent and historic city. From its mighty landmarks at the top of the town to the challenging gradient of Steep Hill and so much more, there's so much to explore and discover on a tour of Lincoln, and I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of the city's illustrious history over the course of this walk. So all that leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you're now looking forward to taking a trip to the great city of Lincoln for yourself in future.